hey, so what is this new angle you're looking at? This is what happens if I put my camera on my printer. It works pretty well because there's like a window right there that lights my face well. But the problem with it is that my room's really messy behind me from this side, like the other angle, you're just my bed behind me. From right here, it's like all of my room and you can see how messy it is, but I'm just doing it today so that you can see something different. Rah. <laughs> so I have a little challenge for you today and I'm probably gonna regret this, but I was just noticing that sometimes like when you pause a video, you know, you can see someone making a really funny face. So my challenge for you is to pause this video at some point during it with me making a really funny face. Um, not intentionally, just like while I'm speaking happens to be a funny face my face is making. My face is making other faces. That's weird. Anyway, yeah, that's my challenge to you. Pause this video at some point, find me making a funny face, take a screenshot of it, and then like send it to me somehow. Twitter, email, however you want. And maybe if I find some good ones, I'll show them in a later vlog. Now that that's taken care of, I decided to show you a different angle entirely. Not sure this one's much better, but you can see my tinfoil hat in the background. And now you can see my tinfoil hat in the foreground. So I was just thinking about Pokemon Go, because, you know, I haven't talked about that in a long time. I think the reason I haven't talked about it is because I haven't been seeing as much about it, so I haven't been playing it as much and stuff, and it's kind of dying down. And I just wanted to say, even though, like, Pokemon Go seems like it was kind of just a trend, like it's starting to die down, sure there's still a lot of people playing it, but I think there's one really good thing that came out of it, and that's all the spin-off Pokemon games, like... Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Platinum, Pokemon XY, Sapphire, all of these games that were pretty much directly inspired by Pokemon Go. You can really see the similarities. It's like, instead of walking around in real life, you walk around in a game, and I just, I think it's really interesting that so many games were able to be inspired by this, like, really simple mobile game, and then they were able to turn it into this whole thing that's, like, got all these games now, and it's really cool, and there's, like, a whole universe, and... I'm just really impressed. That's probably the best thing that came out of Pokemon Go is all the spin-off games, just like little one-off releases that no one expected to be anything big. <sighs> anyway, today's vlog is gonna be a bit of a short one because today I'm also planning to write and record a main channel video and that takes a lot of time and energy, so I'm thinking more about that than what to put in this vlog. Um, but if I do anything else, I'll be sure to keep you updated. One thing I have been doing today is solving two by twos, a lot which is weird, because I don't like the event 2x2. Two two. The reason I'm doing it is that I wanted to listen to podcasts, and whenever I listen to podcasts, I solve Rubik's Cubes, but I didn't just want to do like one-handed, which is what I would normally do, because I'm learning ZZCT and I don't know the full, the full method yet, so I can't really use it to its fullest ability, so I'm waiting to practice it until I basically know the whole thing. So I was like, what other events could I do? And I started doing 4x4, four four, and I was doing okay, getting some good times, but then I just saw a 2x2 two two sitting over here, and I was like, eh, might as well. And I think it's good. I've gotten a lot faster. I'm pretty consistently sub-5 now, which is not really good, but it's pretty good for me. And I think that practicing 2x2 two two is really going to help my two-handed times, because I'm just sort of learning to make my hands work better together, which is something I've never practiced, because I always do one-handed. I've said it before, but if you don't listen to podcasts while you cube, I highly suggest it. It's a very entertaining thing to do. And it doesn't really interfere with the cubing, because it's just like audio and then visual mostly, so... Uh, I don't recommend it for blindfolded solving or FMC though, because you have to actually think in those events. To finish today's vlog, I'm going to say hello to somebody from the comments. Let's go find out who wants me to say hi to them. S. Baird says, say hi to Underwater Cuber next vlog. Well, this is the next vlog after I saw this, so hi Underwater Cuber. I'm Andrew, nice to meet you. If you want me to say hi to you in approximately six days, maybe a little longer, Tell me to say hi to you in the comments. I'll probably say hi to the first one. Just do it. Okay, bye.